Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're about to celebrate our first WCW of the day. She is a businesswoman that has made it so far successfully. And she is also now one of Forbes 30 under 30. It's the one and only Tanya Omotayo of Ziva Lagos. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Good to have I'm you. great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you. First of all, a huge congratulations. How does it feel to be listed on the Forbes 30 under 30? You know what? Amazing. Like, it took so long for it to sink in. I was like, nah, this. When I saw it, I first saw it on Bella Ninja. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, they had emailed and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe they didn't pick me. Because the first list I saw, I didn't see my name. So I was kind of sad. And then I saw it again on Bella Ninja. And I saw my name. But I didn't see any pictures. I was like, yeah, this is not real. I'm not going to believe it until I physically see yeah. the magazine. And then I saw it. And I couldn't sleep for like how did two you, days. How did you react <laughs> when you saw it? I think I was numb. Because it's such a big deal. Forbes is such a big deal. And I had a meeting with my strategist like a few months beforehand. And I was like, before five years, I have to be on Forbes. So for it to come so soon after that conversation was so amazing. Tell me so much about the power of imagination yes, and the power honestly, of confessions. Yes, honestly. Yes. And yes. it also shows that you set goals for yourself and you ended up managing to achieve those goals. That's mm -hmm. something I'm still trying to actually like do. Yeah. But tell me a bit about how you've managed to set goals for yourself to become such a successful entrepreneur. Um, to be honest, when I started Ziva, I had no idea it was going to grow so quickly. I mean, I, you know, you always dream when you start a business or start something. So I had big dreams, but I just had no idea it was going to... We're only a year and seven months. So this is a pretty big deal. Like, I've grown so much in such a short period of time. Wow. But it's also because I literally eat, sleep, live... Everything, Ziva. Ziva. you know, like I, I still am very hands on. I still do almost everything. So I think that also helped a lot. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So when you started your business, what were some of the lessons? Now, given the benefit of hindsight, yeah. what are some of the things you learned with regards to doing a business in Nigeria? Um, patience. I think that's key. That's number one. Second of all, I knew nothing. Like, I literally went in blind. I knew I wanted to do fashion. I knew I wanted to do an affordable line because... Every time I wanted to buy something, things were always so expensive or they just were not my own style. And I'm like, I'm sure there are other people that like my style that have the same struggle. So surely this must be something that I can do. Now, when I started, my challenges were mainly like patients, like dealing with tailors, dealing with factories, because I used to outsource. So it was a lot of stress and even just fabric sourcing everything can be so difficult but you have to be really really patient and if you take your time to find you know the perfect product then you'll be fine yeah. but I feel like a lot of people rush things or they get frustrated or they get tired I've tried and failed so many times I started thinking about doing a clothing line for like I think about six or seven years ago and I only just did it I kept giving up or things would not go the way I wanted it to but when it was right it was right and it worked yeah. out well for you. And yes, it did. Now, it's said that 40% of Nigerian women stay are entrepreneurs, and we are the most entrepreneurial in the world. And that is huge, yes, right? Yes, that's a Now, big deal. unfortunately, we also live in an environment that doesn't necessarily make it that conducive for mm -hmm. us. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, like, the figures would be way higher if yep. it did. So what are some of the challenges that you faced based on the environment since you started your own SME? Um, electricity. I feel like we spend so much money on unnecessary things i mean they are necessary because we don't have them but if this was a different country i wouldn't be spending so much on electricity but like buying diesel servicing a generator you know just keeping your business alive and open costs so much money that money could be reinvested into your business you know and you can you could go further or even import bans we don't produce factories yet i'm um, sorry we don't produce fabrics mm. yet it is illegal to bring in fabrics little things like that like we don't have the resources here but then it's so difficult to bring these things in and it's so expensive to bring these things in yet we don't have them locally all right yeah okay still speaking about challenges it's easy for people to see the success of see the success course. stories yes but the underground work that is mm -hmm. put there they don't see it now you once mentioned in, in your posts that at some point when you started ziva you had to put clothes in your boots just so that Girl. in case people wanted to <laughs> yes. order, you could. So give us a, an explanation, like right. a detailed explanation. How did Ziva start? And did you start other businesses? You mentioned that you had tried yeah. for years and yeah. you had failed and you only just, you know, found your foot. Right. What was the journey like? Lead us through the wow. journey from where you started yeah. to where you are today. When I started Ziva, I had a nine to five, which a normal nine to five is not actually a nine to five. You're there from probably nine to eight. So I had a full time job. 
And I started Ziva, and that's how you know that I never expected it to be the way, like be as big as it became. Now, I did a pop-up because I was really scared of failure. And I was in the media a lot. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not even going to tell anybody that it's mine. So that if it fails, they'll not be like, oh, Tanya Matayo has failed. I was really scared of the blogs and all of those things. And when I started, I started with a pop-up just to kind of test the markets because I had invested a lot of money and I, I just wanted to see how it worked. I know a lot of people that have stores and they have no customers. I'm like, why are you paying rent if there's nobody here? You're wasting money. So I wanted to be sure that it was a successful thing before I went and paid all this money to get a store. So when I started, I still had my nine to five. I did my first pop-up, which was amazing. I literally almost sold out of everything. And then the rest of the stuff I had in my boot because I had a job. I had no staff, no assistant, no nothing. So I was replying DMs, you know, cause most of my, my clients were from Instagram in the beginning. So I would reply DMs while I was at work. I would pick up phone calls while I was at work. And then if someone wanted something, I would go to my boot, look for it, put it in a Ziva bag, call a delivery company, have them come and pick it up, send it out. And I was literally doing this for a few months until I was like, you know what? First of all, this is not fair on my employer because it was now occupying a lot of my time, me multitasking, writing professional emails and replying Ziva DMs, you know. And after about three months, I think I quit my job and then I had everything in my house. So I literally had racks all over my living room with all the Ziva clothes on it. And then I, would, I was still replying emails, doing everything by myself. And then when people would DM me like, oh, can I come and try this on? I'd be like, oh my God. So I would go through the person's page, go through their pictures and I'd be like, is this person, can this person come to my house or not? <laughs> I was literally searching yeah. like that. And then if I felt like it was like a decent person or someone that would not come and rob me or whatever, I would let the person come to my house and try on clothes. And then I traveled with my friend for like a month. I had no sales, no nothing, obviously, because there was nobody that could do it for me. So while I was gone, I was like, you know what? I think it's time to open a store. This is no longer just an online business. Like you have to grow it. So I opened a little shoe box because it was really small and started my first store there in June. Um, so this was six months after I started Ziva. And yeah. That's where things really started. And now you have a way bigger store yes. and you've literally <laughs> taken that step too, which is yep. huge. Now, earlier on today on the show, Olive and I were speaking about the fact that sometimes or a lot of the time, women are so intelligent, mm -hmm. yet your intelligence is masked by other people trying yes. to look at you in a different way, focus on your beauty, this mm -hmm. and that, etc. Mm -hmm. What challenges would you say that you faced with that and how have you had to like put it behind you to continue to persevere? To be honest, I feel like I faced those challenges when I had a nine to five Yeah. because I was in a male dominated industry. Now with Ziva, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've had those kinds of challenges because most of my staff are female. I, I'm really big on women empowerment. You know, like I just don't have those issues. But in the normal working world, I did. Which industry were you in before you came into Entertainment okay. and PR. And yeah, so it's male dominated. Okay. Yeah. And whilst you're there, we believe that in every place you find yourself, there are always lessons to teach. Mm -hmm. So whilst you're there, what would you say are some of the key lessons you learn that mm -hmm. you apply to business? Um, I think how to manage people. I started off working for Mr. Paul Okoye, who does all the endorsements and all the big events, you know. And I had to work with entertainers and sports stars, and they're difficult. They are, you know, it's normal. If, if someone calls you off guard, it's normal. Sometimes a company wants you now, you know, and it's not your fault, but you're going to have to explain that to an entertainer who's probably at home trying to rest. So I had to really learn how to deal with people. And that has helped me in my business because the client is always right. Even if they're wrong, they're still right. You know, some of them can be really rude. I've had people shout at me and all sorts of things. But the patience that I learned from working in the entertainment industry has really helped me in my business. That's really good. Now let's look ahead at the future. What, what do you want for Ziva Lagos? Where do you see Ziva in the next five years? Um, I literally want to conquer the world. I want to do everything. I want to do Ziva home. I want to do Ziva kids. I want to do Ziva maternity. I want to do a full Ziva men's line. I want to do Ziva beauty, Ziva skincare, Ziva everything. But gradually, I believe in baby steps and starting small 
as opposed to starting big and having to down, downsize. I would rather start small and build and keep building. All right, we're still in the season of talking about PVCs and elections yeah. and trying to make Nigeria a better place. Right. So you're a business person mm -hmm. in Nigeria. What mm -hmm. are some of the changes you would like to see as we approach 2019? So whilst people are scrutinizing and deciding who to vote mm -hmm. for and who mm -hmm. not to vote for, what are the things you would like, the promises that you'd like to see that you don't want to just be mere promises? Yeah. So what are the changes you'd like to see in Nigeria in 2019 in the business space? It's, I mean, I think the major thing is just, uh, we just need electricity. Like, it will make life so much easier for the whole country if we just had less, 24 hours is even pushing it. Let's, let's just do better. See how we've even gotten so comfortable yes. with, you know, asking yeah. for something that should be basic. Exactly. So, I mean, I just feel like it is possible. Like, we are supposed to be the giants of Africa, yet we don't have basic things that smaller countries have. Yeah. And I do feel like it is possible if they just actually go ahead and do it. And also security for everything, like in business, like we just need better security in the country so that you're safer. Even with staff going home at night, like you're always worried about little things, better transportation. Especially being vulnerable as a woman, yes. you know. It's, it's, it's tough, but we'll get there, I believe, we, in our country. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> now back over to Ziva for a second. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose the name Ziva? It's actually a really funny story. When I first, when I had my brand meeting, they were like, oh, you can't say this story. I'm like, but it's the truth. They wanted me to make up this fake story. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. So when I first started looking for names, I combined everybody's name in my family, my name, my parents, every, my sister, everybody's name. It's not, it all sounded stupid. I'm like, no, this is not working. I then started Googling. My friend was like, oh, do something exotic. Look for like a French name. I'm like, nobody's going to be able to pronounce this. This does not make any sense. So what I ended up doing was one day I gave up. I was like, you know what? It's going to come naturally. So I let it go. Then my favorite character on a TV show called NCIS is called Ziva. Oh. So one day they kept saying a name. I was like, oh, this is a really cool name. So I Googled it and it's a Hebrew name. You know, it means God's light. It means brilliance. It means all these positive things. I was like, you know what? This is going to work. And then all these designers have like, you know, whatever Paris, whatever Milan. I'm like, you know what? We're going to take Lagos and we're going to take it there. Like, you're going to know that we started in Lagos and it's always going to be a part of our story. So, Ziva. Such a brilliant story. I'm glad that you decided Amazing. to stick with the original story. <laughs> yeah, it's much more interesting yeah. than, oh, like, I got a brand team and blah, blah, blah. Nah, that would sound so you know? <laughs> Yeah. Now that you've decided that you took, you want to take Lagos, and I'm sure you want to take the world by storm. Yes. When the world hears the name Ziva Lagos, what do you want them to think about? African excellence, like we're actually excellent. Like we have so much talent in this country and people are, I feel like even with entertainment, you know, like we're crossing over and this is the time. Like for example, next week I have a pop-up in London. Who would have thought that people would actually show up to this little Nigerian girls pop-up in London? You know, like it's a big deal, you know, entertainment, fashion, everything is crossing over. The world is actually looking at us right now for inspiration. So I think this is the perfect time for everyone to just do their best and the world is watching, literally. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very so much. True. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank I you wish you all the best me. with Ziva Thank Lagos. You. And Thank who you. knows, 40 under 40 could be yours the moment you cross no, this No, I want the cover. Mm. I'm coming you know for what? the cover. I love you. Hi. <laughs> I am for coming. That. So you're actually coming for Kylie? Yeah. I must be Ooh, on that cover they? before I'm 30. I have time. All right, so you have it first on Hello Nigeria. Tanya Omotayo has expressed the fact that she wants to be on the cover of Forbes before she turns 30. We join our faith with yours. We believe in you. I so believe long as you can I will think see it, you on that cover. You Thank can you. achieve yes, it. Yes, girl, I'm going to send you a copy yes. when I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so how can people follow you on social media and Ziva as well if they want to find out more information mm -hmm. or place any orders? Okay, mine is Tanya Omotayo. No gaps, no nothing on everything. And Ziva is Ziva Lagos on everything as well. Brilliant. So at Tanya Omotayo and at Ziva Lagos, as we were just speaking about 40% of Nigerian women being entrepreneurial, this was such a great subject. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.